Hi, so in this video, I want to look at the topic of what is mathematics. Uh, the title of this comes from an essay written by Dr. Robert Lewis from Fordham University. Um, I will borrow liberally from his essay in explaining this to you, and I will link the essay in either a comment or on the video somewhere after I learn how to do that. Um, so what is mathematics? And the related question to that is something that uh, was often asked or by several people, I'm sure, in your schooling career. Maybe you asked it yourself, and that is, when am I ever going to use this? And the teacher's answers were often lacking. The answer would be something like, oh, when you do your taxes, you'll use math. Or when you're doing a recipe, you'll use math. Uh, gas mileage, uh, things as such. but that's not really how math gets used everyday life. Um, yeah, it's true, those are some applications of math, but we can hire people to do those things for us. An accountant or a tax attorney uh, can handle that. Uh, gas mileage is calculated by our vehicles today without us having to do it. So then, what is math and when will I use it or how will I use it? Uh, to illustrate this, uh, one of the analogies that Dr. Lewis uses is of a basketball player. And this basketball player, he's going to practice uh, four days a week and he's running on a treadmill, right, on these practices and things like that, his workouts and stuff. And then he goes to the game at the end of the week and it's the last few seconds of the game, the team's down by three and coach calls a timeout. And the star player comes up to the coach and the coach says, all right, you know what to do, right? And he says, yeah, coach, I'm going to get my treadmill. No, no, that never happens. Have you ever seen a treadmill on a basketball court? Then why did he run on it so much? Why was that done in the practices and in the workouts? Well, what he did was he built lung capacity. He doesn't use the treadmill itself on the basketball court. Instead, he uses the lung capacity and the endurance to be able to perform at a high level for a long period of time. And that's exactly how mathematics works. It builds mental capacity. It is the structure of logical thought itself. Uh, another analogy that he used in the essay was, if you think back to when you learned how to read, uh, there were these characters in the books, Dick, Jane, and Spock. And you would read sentences like, see Jane run, and see Spock walk. Uh, have you ever used the fact that their names were Dick, Jane, and Spock? No, right? You've never needed to know that for any employer, so what was the purpose? The purpose was not their names. Their purpose was learning to read. And the purpose of math is to learn to think rationally. Um, algorithmic processes are things that govern our daily lives. You'll see memes online on social media or people will say uh, they should remove Algebra 2 from high school curriculum and add in things that we'll actually use in life, like, uh, I don't know, various things you, you need to do, um, how to buy a home or calculate your loans and stuff. And, and the problem with that is, is they're not thinking about what you're actually developing in a course like Algebra 2, and that's the ability to work within algorithmic processes. For example, you will do things like find the roots of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and you'll use a formula or a process completing the square to generate these roots, right? So then how does that apply? Do you need this when you go to your job working for company X? No, nobody asks you to find those roots. Well, for most companies. Uh, so then what is it? What do you do? Well, instead, they ask you to write the instruction manual for the latest technological gizmo, right? They ask you to write the safety manual for uh, a company's power plant or something as such, right? Those are algorithmic processes that we follow and protocols that we follow in a business that will protect the user from damage or, or injury or, or things like that. How else do you use it? You can use the algorithmic processes if you can design algorithmic processes. Think about it. Who do you think gets paid more? The person who makes the system for everybody else to run or the people who replicate the processes that that person created? The people who replicate the processes, you can find them anywhere. The person who made the processes for everyone to follow typically is paid a lot more. 
right? So then another thing you might ask yourself is what subjects in math could be most useful? Uh, for most people who are not mathematicians, the answer to that question, in my opinion, is geometry, and more specifically, the proofs. The proofs in geometry are so important. Uh, when I was in school, typically 50% of the textbook would be, or the problem set, would be proofs. Today it's down to about 10%, sadly, as educators or administrators have decided that it was too difficult and kids felt demoralized, and we can't have that, so let's take the proofs out because it was making kids not pass geometry. Well, that's a horrible idea. What, what do we use these proofs for? Well, to illustrate, I'm going to tell you a, a story from history um, about a person named Socrates. Socrates, you know, was uh, one of the fathers of Western philosophy. He's had a great impact on generations to come. Uh, one of his students was Plato, who you've also likely heard of. Now, Plato founded the very first school. And where did he found this school? He founded it in a grove called Academus. And it's from this grove's name we get the name that you're very familiar with and have probably already said, and that word is academy. So this academy, what did they do there? They studied things like uh, that philosophers study. What is the purpose of life? What religious beliefs, if any, are accurate? Does God exist? Uh, what sort of laws should govern a society? Is there a, a form of taxation that is appropriate for a city or for a government to hold the people to? Is war ever just? Right? These are important questions that many of you have probably wrestled with, or you will in time, or you know people who have thought about these things. So what does that have to do with math or geometry? Well, what's funny is there was doors to this academy, and on the doorway to the academy, Plato had etched as it is said, let no man enter these doors that does not know geometry. What? Why? Why geometry? Well, tell me something. Do you think it's easier to prove that two lines are parallel? Do you think it's easier to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF? Well, such things are kind of trivial, actually. Those are easy, but is it easier to prove them, or is it easier to prove to me what form of government is best for society? Well, what form of government is far more complex, so if you want to try and tell me or others or convince them of something about government or the way the world should be or what, what the world is and how it works, you want to prove something like that, but you can't prove this? Well, I probably don't care to hear your proof then. Right? Your proof isn't even that great because you've already shown me, you've demonstrated your inability to actually demonstrate. Now you might have an opinion and that's great, everybody has an opinion, but is it rested on logic and reasoning? Right? And so, where do we use proofs today then? Uh, you use proofs in every field. How? Let's think about different fields you could study. Let's say a doctor. What happens? A patient comes in. What does the patient do? They provide given information. And the doctor will look at the given information and says, based on what I've seen here, uh, you have pneumonia or you have you know, various disease X. Right? That's what a doctor does. He demonstrates, he proves to the patient what their condition is. What about a lawyer? A lawyer is also going to be proving what? To a judge and to a jury, various things about the law, trying to convince them that his position is correct. Well, let's say you just want to be a writer, right? Writers, they don't need to uh, do proofs. Oh, but all contraire, right? When you write something to somebody else, you're usually trying to convince them of your point of view. What are you doing? You're taking given information that you've observed in your environment or in the news, and you're trying to prove something to someone else. So yes, writers use proofs every day. Um, it is said that Lincoln, before he became president, uh, he wanted to learn how to demonstrate to the people what he thought was the best policy prescriptions for the country. So what did he do? Before he went on the campaign trail, he studied Euclid, right to learn geometry. So again, math is about the structure of logic, the structure of thought itself. When will you use it? If you learned correctly, you'll use it every day. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video.